the yellow hat is now available in the Tindy shop and I have also published all design related information on my GitHub page under the Open Hardware license. In this video I show you step by step how you can build a yellow hat for yourself. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. The first step is preparing all the parts that are needed to build the yellow hat. Here we go. A PC board with the SMD components mounted and ready to go. I ordered mine from JLC PCB and I show you in a minute how to do that. For all the following components you find links in the description of this video. Keep in mind that the availability of electronic components changes rather fast and these links are working while I am making this video, but no guarantee for the future. Here are the parts. A 3 amp buck converter so the yellow head can be powered from an external 12 volt power supply and four U-shaped wire hooks for the installation on the PC board. A right angle 8 pole pin header to connect the IoTT stick. Eight six pole single row pin headers to connect the sensor cables. A 3 amp DC power jack. Four pieces of 12 pole ribbon cable about one foot long each. Four 12 pole IDC dual row sockets to connect the ribbon cables. A 3 pole JST plug pigtail to connect a WS2812 LED chain. Four M2 by 10 mm hex screws and some yellow PLA filament for printing the enclosure. To order the PCBs you need the three design files from the make your own section on the GitHub page. The Gerber file, the bill of material file and the SMD placement data for the assembly robot. You then go to jlcpcb.com webpage and first load the Gerber file. From the options select the PCB thickness to be 1.2 mm and the remove order number option you should set to specify a location as the location is specified in the Gerber file. Next, activate the SMT assembly button and click assemble top side. That is the side that has all the electronic components. Next, specify the quantity you want to have assembled. Your PCB minimum quantity is 5, but you can select to have only two of them assembled, which I think is a nice option. Select edit by JLPCB for the tooling holes and click confirm. On the next page upload the bill of material and the pick and place file and then click next. The system then confirms the components that will be assembled. If a particular component is not confirmed it is probably because it is temporarily out of stock. You can either purchase it elsewhere or solder it yourself or you can check again after a few days and see if they have it. Should a component no longer be available you can always download the schematics of the board, load it into the ECEDA software and replace it, but you would then have to create a new Gerber file. And yes, I am of course facing the same problem every time I order a new batch of boards and therefore will update and republish the design information on, a, on GitHub periodically. Once the ordering is completed, it typically takes about 10 days to manufacture and ship the PCBs to a United States address. While waiting for the PCBs, there is time to make the enclosure. To print it, you download the STL files from the enclosure section on the GitHub page. The enclosure consists of a base and a cover. Simply load the STL files to the 3D printer and get them printed. On my MakerBot the process takes about 3 hours. As always after unloading the printouts remove the bed and clean the parts. Check the holes and use a drill if needed to clean them up. The last things to prepare are the ribbon cables to connect the input elements like buttons or potentiometers. Cut 4 pieces of the cable for the length needed for your application and mount a dual row connector on one end. Make sure the notch on the body of the connector is facing away from the yellow hat. 
Also, the first two pins on the left side of each connector carry 3.3 volts. So if your cable is color coded, you may want to make sure that all cables are oriented the same way, which later helps with the installation. There are special tools to install these connectors, but a simple vise will do as well. The first step in the actual assembly process is uploading the firmware to the controller on the Yellowhead PC board. You can do that using the pinholes J1 and J2 in the area where the IOTT stick will be placed. J1 is an ISP connector. You can use it to either load the full firmware or just a bootloader. You can use a normal Arduino Uno development board and connect it as shown here and described in the Arduino documentation listed in the description below. Then load the Arduino as ISP program from the example section in the Arduino IDE. After that, switch the programmer to Arduino as ISP and click the Burn Bootloader option. When successful, you are ready for the second step, which is loading the actual firmware. To do so, you can use an FTDI programmer and connect it to J2, as the pinout of J2 should match with a standard FTDI programmer. The sketch to be loaded is in the firmware section of the GitHub page. Load it into the Arduino IDE and then upload it to the yellow headboard using the FTDI programmer. Make sure you set the board to Arduino Uno and the programmer to AVR ISP, which should be the default option anyway. OK, now that you are done with the software, it is time to assemble the other components. The first is the buck converter. It is installed on the bottom side of the board next to the DC jack. It is best to bend some thin wire pieces to U-shaped hooks and place the buck converter on the board. Before soldering, make sure that the buck converter is not covering any screw holes on the board. If so, you may have to push it a little bit towards the end of the board to make sure the screw can pass through the hole properly. Then solder one side, turn the board around and solder the other side. Next, we install the 8-pin angle connector for the stick. It is actually best to insert it into a stick and only then place and solder the angle connector. That way, you make sure the pins have the correct distance from the board. Solder the first and last pin, then remove the stick and solder the remaining pins. For the input pin headers, it is also most convenient to stick them into the cable connectors and solder the first two pins on one side. Then verify that the pin headers are vertical and with no distance from the PC board. When everything is correct, Solder the remaining 10 pins of the pin header and repeat the process for all four of them. Finally, mount and solder the DC jack and the pigtail cable for the LED chain. Both are mounted on the bottom side of the board as all other connectors. When done with soldering, give the board a visual inspection and verify that no soldering joint was left out. If everything looks good, Connect an IOTT stick and power it via USB port. Configure it for the yellow hat and configure LEDs and buttons as needed. Configure the command source as Loconet or Loconet over MQTT depending on your setup and connect the Loconet interface if needed. You should now be able to activate the onboard LED number 0 and you can open the button setup page to verify that all the input buttons are working. Note that due to an error on the current board revision, there is a pin mismatch between pins 15 and 16 as well as 31 and 32, which will be corrected with the next hardware revision. If the board is not working as expected, the problem is most likely in the setup of the IoTT stick or in the firmware on the yellow headboard. The quality of the PC board itself as well as of the component assembly is normally excellent, 
So far I have never had a board with any kind of defect on the hardware side. I had some boards though that did not work the first time I fired them up and in all cases it was due to the firmware not properly loaded. Most likely because I removed the FTDI programmer too quickly or maybe a bad contact. Anyway, after reloading the firmware they were all working as expected. The final thing we have to do on the electronics side is adjusting the voltage of the buck converter. First turn the adjustment screw all the way to the right to minimize the output voltage. Then connect the 12 volt power supply and scroll through, the, through to the diagnose page of the IOTT stick display. Verify the 5 volt in voltage, it should be around 4.2 volts, which is the loopback voltage from the USB voltage minus the voltage drop on the protection diode. Now start carefully turning the adjustment screw to the left until you get a 5 volt in voltage of about 5 or 5.1 volts. Adjust slowly to not cause a voltage spike to the IOTT stick. Once you have the board working, it is time for the final assembly. Place the board upside down in the base of the enclosure, then place the upper part of the enclosure on top of it. Use a small screwdriver or a piece of wire to make sure all screw holes line up properly and then insert the four screws. Note that the first time the screw will cut a thread into the plastic material, so it requires a little more torque than usual. Insert the screws until they are flush with the enclosure, but do not over tighten. And that's it. The yellow head is now ready for installation on your layout. Connect the ribbon cables as needed, then use a utility knife to separate the individual wires of the ribbon cable. Cut a half of an inch or so and then you can rip the wires apart as needed. Remember that wires 1 and 2 carry 3.3 volts and wires 11 and 12 are connected to ground. The 8 wires in between are the input signals of the group the cable is connected to. The yellow head uses an internal pull-up resistor, so to activate the input you need to connect it to ground. You will see the input change on the configuration screen as you open and close the contact. To make an analog input you connect 3.3 volt and ground to the outside contacts of a 2 kilo ohm potentiometer and the signal wire is soldered to the middle contact. When you now configure the input as analog, you will see the value gradually change from 0 to 4095 depending on the position of the potentiometer. And that's it. You see, it's not too complicated. And if you have just some experience with electronics, certainly a nice project. However, if you don't like this type of work or building your own electronics components is sort of a mystery to you, you can conveniently buy the yellow hat from my Tindy page. Right now it is listed for an introductionary price of $18.50. And that's it for this video. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the IOTT channel and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. Also, if this information was useful or at least interesting for you, Please let me know, leave me a comment below and click the like button. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.